Um, before we get started, just a quick word about the Chamber. So the Chamber's mission is to connect business, community, and education. We see ourselves as a liaison for the community, a convener. Um, as far as politics go, we do not endorse candidates or legislation, but rather we act as a liaison and try and equip voters with the information that they need to make the, their right decision on election day. So we do that through events like this, Meet the Candidates. Uh, we had a very successful event last night in Auburn. We're excited to be here in Garrett tonight. I want to thank both of our candidates for participating in tonight's event. Um, the format for this evening, so each candidate will be given 10 minutes to talk. They were given three questions ahead of time that they were able to prepare. Uh, they'll receive 10 minutes each to speak, and then they're able to mingle with the, the attendees here however they choose to after that first portion. Uh, we are live on Facebook and pending any technical difficulties, there will be a video available for you to review and share at a later time. Um, and then KPC is also here and recording as well, so we do have a, a backup in case of technical difficulties. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, our first candidate that will be speaking tonight is Larry Getz. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, the Cal Partnership, Chamber Partnership with Shannon, and we've got some board members here tonight, Chris and Jen, thank you for coming over. And also the Young Professional Group is part of that also. Thank you for hosting this and also the JAM Center for opening up this beautiful facility for us tonight. Um, we, I'm excited for the future of Garrett. I mean, I, I, it's really hard for me to contain, so when I start talking about Garrett, I get even emotional sometimes because I see a lot of potential. I, I see we're right next to a bunch of growth happening. Um, a lot of new things happening around us, but I'm afraid it's not happening yet in Garrett. We've got, the, the, one of the main things when I go around and talk to people is when I ask them how things are going in Garrett. How do you like living in Garrett? Their answer is usually, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. But, in my opinion, just okay is not okay. So, what can we do going forward to, to correct that? A couple of the questions that were asked. Um, one of the questions was, how can we make our leadership and town more, more diverse? First of all, we need to be open to new ideas. This involves progressive thinking, forward thinking. Um, I think we can do better at that. Um, be open. Don't just, if, if someone's not like you, doesn't look like you, act like you, talk like you, that's okay. I mean, some of that is really, really good because you're going to get a different perspective that maybe you've never even thought about that's going to open up your mind to maybe some new ideas that could happen in our community. I, I can see that happening very, very easily, um, especially with the growth coming up this way. Another question was how, if you were given a million dollars, how would you use that? Just a million dollar grant, here's the check, where would you spend that? Well, first of all, in my opinion, that wouldn't be my decision. That would be a community decision. Because though I would be mayor, I, I work for you, the citizens of Garrett, and I am so happy with the turnout tonight. I, I couldn't be more pleased. It's tremendous that there's interest in this event tonight with Mayor Fiant and myself. I mean, that shows me something that people do care in this community. But my personal answer to that would be, my heart has always been with kids and youth. So my knee-jerk response to that would be, I would put it in the parks, or the jam center, or the schools, or early education, somewhere that's affecting people. Because when I would have a million dollars, I wouldn't want to get my most bang for my buck to help kids, or to help the citizens of Garrett, period. So that would be my knee-jerk reaction to that. But my, I also know that we have a need in workforce development. So I would also like to see in the, in the future 
some training, not, I mean, the school is doing a great job with the career development program. I, they've set a template that's just, it's one of the elite ones in the state, to be frank with you. I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm not going to hide that. But I think we can duplicate that for adults. Why can't we have a facility, even if, if using the school facility? Donate a little money towards that and make it a facility for adults. I mean, we, the unemployment is low in DeKalb County, but I think we're underemployed. I mean, there's a lot of people that are not skilled to, to earn the higher wages. We could help correct that and work on some of the economic issues that people are dealing with. That people are dealing with some hard issues. And the last question that was posed to us was, how would you um, utilize the community members and citizens to solve uh, community problems? That is a great one because we could, the human portion of that is what's huge for me. Because for me, no matter what you're doing, it's about relationships. It's not about infrastructure. It's not about growing even. It's not about any of that. It's about relationships. And, and if you don't have a relationship with somebody, you can't get their input. You have no idea what they're really thinking. So unless you go and communicate with that person, talk with them, get their in, have town hall style meetings, Waterloo's tenant and Cameron are doing a great job of this up there. Getting get town hall style meetings where you've got a lot of community <laughs> input on solving the problems of the community rather than it coming just from a handful of people. So those would be my, my three questions. Now, myself going forward with, as far as a platform, I mean, the first thing I would want to do, and this is part of the progressive thinking and forward thinking, is we got to come up with a strategic plan. Where do we want to be in 5, 10, 25, years down the road. I don't think we have that strategic plan in place. But we can develop that as a community. We can evolve the community that. Where do we want to be as a community as far as the involvement? So with all the great things going on around us, we can do better involving our community. And involving our community to solve the problems, we can be, I want to also create a safe place to discuss hard topics. Everybody knows there's a meth issue in town. And not just in our town, but it's region-wide, statewide. Let's create a safe place where we can discuss options on what to do with that and how to solve that problem. We're going to need a whole bunch of people to help solve that one. But let's at least create a safe place. Our population is not growing. I mean, since the 2010 census, through 2018, we've grown from 62.86 to 63.90. That's 104 people, or roughly 1.2 percent. That compared to the regions around us, man, we're we're not we're not getting it. That's not that's not okay. So I think we can do better in that area. Um, communication. I want to be a full-time mayor. I mean, I don't. The pay is not irrelevant. But as far as office hours and accessibility, I want to be a full-time mayor. In fact, I've got business cards. It's got my personal cell. I want to begin that tonight. My personal cell and email on that. If you need anything at any time, it's a 24-7 deal. I mean, I may be sleeping and not get the call, but I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Just leave that message. But I, and please come see me. I've got cards with me, so please. Uh, take that opportunity to get those. And lastly, I want to partner with regional. I mean, my goodness, we've got all kinds of, with Shannon, we've got, with the chamber, we've got, I feel, it almost feels like a perfect storm where we've got all the right pieces in the right places. Anton King is our economic development person. Um, Amber Jackson did a great job at the festival, but she's also works with the Visitors Bureau to Cal County. Andrea Kern, I mean, there's a couple things in the works that, man, could have really affected. Stellar communities are looking for communities to, to give money to. Um, there's Blue Zones. There's all kinds of different places that we could partner and actually benefit from their donations and, and community development. So I just want you to consider, I mean, if you're going to, 
I don't want this election to be about two good guys. I mean, to be totally transparent, that's why I drug my feet getting into it, because personally I like Mayor Fine. He's a great guy. But I don't want you to vote on who's the greater guy. I want you to vote this November 5th and through October starts early election, who's going to be the best candidate to promote Garrett, to advocate for Garrett, to, to have progressive view of Garrett, to have a plan for Garrett in the future. Go to the polls with those things in mind, and I would appreciate your support, and I know my time's about running out, so I will hand it back over to Shannon. But I thank you all for coming tonight, and especially my wife and the family support. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, hon. Good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you for uh, coming here tonight. And thank you, Jam Center, for hosting and DeKalb Chamber for arranging this. Let me start by saying that everything has, that we've done in this city so far has been a team effort. And about everybody that works for this city has contributed in one way or another. The last four years, this administration has been busy focusing on making Garrett a better place to live, do business, buy a home, and live the American dream. Preparing Garrett to attract families and people of all ages to call Garrett home, we removed some long-standing eyesores. We were able to get some help in taking down the old Torco station. We then demolished a badly decaying uh, Baptist church on Collins Street. We bought and tore down some homes on Collins Street to make a place for a downtown parking lot. And that parking lot will be paved probably this October. Uh, our industry has been growing. Our industry, like for uh, example, Asman, has added 34,000 square foot. F&H is getting ready to put on 24,000 square foot, but they haven't started construction yet. And of course, Mossberg, if you turn up here and go east down Quincy by Yoder, you'll go past it. And uh, it has increased size two times in the last four years. This last addition is right at 30,000 square feet. And they brought in equipment from Ontario, California. So uh, there's new equipment, plus there's jobs. Our population, uh, wait a minute, let me step back here. There's approximately 129 new homes to be built in the Custer addition. I don't know if you're aware of that. Along with that, the Purdy, Iron Horse, and some other independent homes will be building. There's quite a few of them already sold out at Custer's. And the Garrett High School is building some homes now, or should be building homes soon, on the Brennan Estates. They have more paperwork to do, but they, that's going to start. Um, our population will be growing even more with the addition of these new homes. In the year 2000, the population is 5820. And I think Larry said something about the population today, but he might be off. I'm not saying you are, you might be because the latest uh, ones I have says 6,441 population. Those are the most current numbers that we have at this time, I believe, that come from NERC. Uh, these four years, we've renewed, seen renewed interest in small shops here. This is probably the, the thing that I enjoy the most. Uh, here's a list of them, just, and I can't get them all, but this is most of them. The Miller's Market, the market was gonna close and I took office. We saved that, and we, I can't take the credit for that. I, uh, Mr. Miller should get the credit for that. Um, along with that can be Calb Health or the pharmacy, which our city has not had a pharmacy in a number of years. Um, the Curiosity Shop, Ellie Page, Color Me Happy, Ever After Boutique, Miss Vicky's, Bernadette's Nail Boutique, Jessica Christian's Photography, Hometown Taxes, Epoxy Artist, Tri Lakes Pet Grooming, s and Liquors, Horizon Bank, Auburn Garrett House Pancakes, Union Home Mortgage, Hostel Realty, Cortis and Associates, Dave's Burgers, Das Cavitos, which isn't open yet, but soon, Praying Wives and Mothers Ministries, Wander Mutt, Go Green CBD, Oil Posey Barn, and I know I missed some, but that's, that gives you an idea of what's growing on. Our streets were in disrepair when I took over. We started a community crossings grant uh, with about a million dollars. We had Rejuve Tech come in, and we put micro, micro seal Rejuve Tech and regular paving on our streets. Uh, we had more to go. We didn't get any the second year, but we have some coming this year, and we hope to find out in the next few days if there's more coming for this coming year. Uh, as you can see, Garrett is returning along with the business activity. We've had to look even more at our uh, infrastructure. Uh, there are ADA corners constructed for our citizens with physical challenges so they too could access sidewalks and on our streets and uh, to come to our businesses. And speaking of streets, I, I want to direct this at Larry. Uh, in the coming months, um, well actually, this is from March 8, 2018, and you'll have to ask Larry if I am bringing this up. But in the coming months, the state will be resurfacing State Road 327 Randolph Street through town. And I said that on March 8th. So ask him why when you have a chance. 
Um, and then new sidewalks started on uh, east of the school on 2nd, went west as far as Westside Park, and then you start on Britain, go west to uh, Johnson Street. More was installed east on Warfield to Tally Street, all part of Safe Routes to School. Our water lines across the city are old. Some of them are almost a century old. Um, we're still waiting for the CSX to give us the green light to put a new uh, main water line under the railroad. So uh, you guys have safe clean water for not only you, but for your grandchildren and your children. We need to run new water and sewer out to the new additions in South Industrial Park and North to the or South Industrial Area and the CSX, North Industrial Area, excuse me. Uh, this, some of the cities had employees uh, from the uh, city and make new trash cans, flower boxes in downtown uh, water department, putting in new drinking fountains today. The electric departments installed new lights downtown. And it's, like I said, the state put down a new pavement. Uh, some businesses have used matching facade grants we have to offer, spruce up their storefronts, and we look better than ever before. Uh, worked with the GKB school system the last four years. Uh, Mr. Hurd's class has gone out painted and planted in the East Side Park. High school has used our city council chambers for United, Model United Nations. We partnered twice with them on industrial reform to show up as made here in our city. Our city has ICE students in a, in a few departments and also an intern for the police. We're getting ready to put new signage to keep your kids safe to and from school at the tune of about $40,000 out of our pocket. And I started myself a Mayor's Youth Advisory Council a year and a half ago, about 15, 20 kids. We had our first meeting last night. We're off to a good start. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a fact-finding group to help us find out what the public wanted to see in our city, have and see in our city. Uh, we consist of four groups, the uh, educators, professional youth, and John Q. Public. Main concern is trying to get the theater open. And uh, to talk about the million dollars given, it's funny that come up because we just had a million given to us, and we're going to use it for their wishes. And it's in the engineering process right now, and you will see it happen soon. Um, and there's got to, got to take a look at the people in Garrett. There's a lot of people in Garrett that are very generous, like this person that gave the million dollars. They want to see Garrett get better. They're not, the, the, it, it's just it's very generous people. Um, last time I ran, I ran, uh, put out a bulletin, had uh, points, bullet points, and I, we talked about uh, collaborating with other people. I want you to know that uh, I've been a businessman for 43 years, married 37 years tomorrow to my lovely wife, Vicki. Three grown children, all graduates of Garrett, all post high school uh, uh, education. And I'm currently the president of the Northeastern Indiana, Indiana Mayor's Roundtable. We get together and we collaborate once a month. And that goes from Peru, uh, Hawaii, uh, over to Angola, down to Bern. We all get together once a month. So right now, uh, bullet points entice downtown business owners to for matching facade grants, upgrade parks with new playground equipment, new toys for the city pool, as well as re-roof the bathhouse, start the first phase of AES fiber optics, which will start on the south, south end, where it's going to be easy with a new construction, um, install new wayfinding signs, put a new centrifuge at the wastewater plant to cut down on our cost to produce uh, the uh, sludge, extend sidewalks both north and south, and add more 50-50 sidewalks, Continue works on the streets, electric power, water, and water services. Continue progress of new home building, apartments, seniors, <coughs> living dwellings. Two new welcome signs for the north and south entrances to our city. Paving of downtown parking lot and new heavy duty truck, dump truck because our dump trucks, we have one new one. The rest of them are old enough to vote. We need to replace that. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for your time and coming here. And I hope they're in your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you to the Jam Center for hosting us this evening. Uh, thank you to everyone who's here. Thank you to both of our candidates for participating.